afternoon everyone so again uh, in the post lunch session uh, see the uh, debate for in and around the fluid evolved so the concept of uh, as we mentioned like whether to give fluid or not then to assess how much to give then the selection of the fluid okay crystalloid colloid lots of controversy then uh, some assumption okay crystalloids better kind of this one so then they are googling in depth okay among the crystalloids should we go for balanced crystalloids or uh, like uh, unbalanced so called normal saline and all those things so again maybe in the near future among balanced fluids okay which is better ringer lactate ringer acetate ringer maleate ringer gluconate and all so for time being so see i'll stick on to my topic balanced crystalloids should be the default fluid in icu in critically ill patients so again i uh, will go through some sort of the evidence with the uh, background of uh, physiological rationale okay so there is a physiological rationale so then what uh, we try so we want to prove everything on paper with the so called p value okay so if the p value is less than 0.05 then we'll tell okay it's a significant then one idea when you debate so we'll try to tag to the mortality that is the outcome kind of this one but it may not be always practical at the bedside according to me so with this background so what being a clinician what we are interested okay so we are in search of so called ideal resuscitation fluid so then we have some method to check whether it's an ideal or not so what are the characteristics of this ideal so called ideal uh, resuscitation fluid is predictable and sustained increase in intravascular volume so it should be metabolized and completely excreted uh, from the body so chemical composition should be as close to as that of the extracellular fluid should not have any adverse metabolic or systemic effect cost effective effect in terms of improving the outcome so how we are going to assess i already told we'll tag it to some sort of mortality benefit so morbidity in terms of renal injury and requirement of renal replacement therapy so impact on coagulation parameters amount of fluid needed to uh, uh, primarily to achieve the resuscitation goals so the impact of so called cumulative fluid balance and its clinical impact this is how we will check some physiological rationale in such of a good uh, resuscitation fluid so again if you see physiological rationale of normal saline so 0.9% saline is not a normal okay so if you uh, everyone knows there is an other approach on the right hand and the left hand approach that is called stuart approach for uh, so called acid base balance i will not go in depth into the stuart approach and all so normal saline obviously it's having a high chloride content there is something called strong ion difference so it is the difference between the strong cations and that of the strong anions it is zero for the normal saline so then uh, so strong ion difference of extra fluid uh, extra cellular fluid is around 40 which is equivalent to that of the balanced crystallite than that of the sid which is zero for the normal saline so following an infusion of 0.9% saline there is a decrease in plasma strong ion difference that is near to zero and increase in metabolic acidosis we know that there is something called normal anion gap normal anion gap hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis again if you see the components of this so available crystalloids in the market and in the clinical area so mainly we compare 0.9% saline versus that of the most common used ringer lactate and that of the plasma line even Sterofundin is started using, but data available is not so enough. So we'll stick on to ringer lactate plasma light versus that of the so-called 0.9%. We know that obviously the chloride and sodium component of normal saline is very much higher than that of the expected extracellular fluid level. Again, it applies to the osmolarity and the oncotic pressure of uh, this normal saline as compared to that of the ringer lactate and that of plasma light. So if you see this was the study which published in 2010 so total volume input and that of the total volume output and effects on uh, chloride and that of the base excess if you see uh, so in surgical patient so after immediately after the surgery 5 hours in the ICU and down the line post operatively day 1 day 2 the load of chloride so in terms which is causing bad thing on the metabolic acidosis is huge and which is clinically significant as per the so called ideal p value that is 0.05 so it leads to loads of chloride level if you use continuously normal saline infusion in uh, like critically ill surgical patient the true uh, even post operative period along with there is a more and more negativity towards the base deficit again so moving on so i told chloride is the culprit in normal saline as compared to that of the balanced crystalloid solutions and all so first evidence 
combine together okay there is something called association between chloride liberal versus that of the chloride restrictive intravenous fluid administration strategy and kidney injury in critical ill patient which published in jama in 2012 so we know that the rationale is chloride is going to hamper the like auto regulation of the renal circulation which is going to cause renal afferent arterial vasoconstriction decreased gfr acidosis and its after effects and all those things okay so more need of Uh, renal replacement therapy and all. So here, so prospective sequential study. So it was like two consecutive year study. In one year, that is 2008, compared near about 760 patient against that of the 2009, again around 770 patient. One year they used chloride rich and one year they used chloride restricted fluid. So any use of chloride rich intravenous fluid, that is 0.9% saline. so succinated gelatin 4% albumin was restricted during the intervention succeeded period patient instead receive a lactate solution either maybe hartman solution or balanced solution like plasma light 148 and chloride pour the result pour 20% albumin so results chloride administration decreased any obviously the amount of chloride infusion was very low so in the restricted period significant decrease in serum creatinine that is statistically significant significant decrease in injury and that of the renal failure so requirement of rrt was also significantly came down if you use chloride restricted strategy there was no difference in i told again if you tag everything to that of the mortality so practically it may not be applicable at the bedside being a clinician no difference in difference in hospital mortality hospital or icu length of stay need of rrt after hospital discharge in house there was an increase in requirement of the renal replacement therapy again down the line okay this is just to speak on the chloride so after effects and adverse effects of the chloride so down the line they designed the like uh, studies so saline versus balanced salt solution so it was a major uh, review published by uh, vincent and debecker in critical care 2016 so really we need to compare balanced versus sort of the normal saline so the still existing rcts how they evolve is like so they used normal saline in one hand and balanced crystallites in the other hand so if the chloride is crossing some limit they cross over the patient to that of the balanced crystallite so then there is no difference in the outcome we have not checked till the end of that particular normal saline in other study groups uh, some rcts what they have done till the end whatever the chloride level they continued giving the normal saline if it crosses even 110 118 also which showed worse outcome okay these are the two types of rcts available rcts when they compare normal saline versus that of the balanced crystallites uh, in the current evidence again begin with maybe in the uh, last decade we had a good papers on balanced versus unbalanced crystallites and all so to begin with in 2012 so there was a large retrospective data which showed balanced fluid group as less major complication than that of the unbalanced group okay again so in the retrospective data analysis so which published in 2014 so near about 53 patient they analyzed lower mortality in balanced fluid group so these are the retrospective small studies and all so what about the prospective data okay so this was the uh, study more recently in 2015 published in jama that is called split randomized clinical trial so effect of buffered crystallized solution versus the saline on acute kidney injury among patients in icu okay what they did double blinded randomized crossover trial crossover okay after particular chloride level they allowed to move to the balanced crystallized group so primary outcome proportion of patients with acute kidney injury secondary outcome they Uh, done on incidence of renal replacement therapy requirement under of the in hospital mortality what they found they included near about 2200 patients who are eligible so equally near about 1100 patient in each group so proportion of patient with acute kidney injury within 90 days no statistical significance okay incidence of rrt no statistical significance in hospital mortality was also not significant statistically but the problem is in conclusion so they concluded okay among patients receiving crystallized fluid therapy in icu use of buffered crystallized compared with saline did not reduce the risk of acute kidney injury but take home foot note with this trial is further large randomized clinical trials are needed to assess the efficacy in high risk patient the limitation if you start reading in between the line of this so called split trial the limitation of this trial were majority of patients admitted to icu followed an elective surgery 
which may not be the scenario in critically ill patient what we manage on routine basis many of these patients were septic were not septic and did not have any major comorbid conditions cross over was allowed after reaching a particular chloride level okay if they reached some mm. chloride level and all so they allowed to move to that of the balanced crystalloid solution most of them received less than 2 liters of that of the normal saline question is if someone received more like more than 2 liters of normal saline what is the effect on acute kidney injury and that of the outcome so two more trials okay these are the two major trials that is called smart trial so near about 15000 patient done in five icus across the united states so compared normal saline versus that of the ringer lactate or plasma light so obviously here there was a, a statistically significant like changes in terms of major adverse kidney event uh, saline versus that of the balanced crystalloid again there was no major so called statistically significant difference in terms of the mortality if you consider so called ideal p value that is 0.05 it was 0.06 so secondary outcome none of the secondary outcome showed some sort of statistical significance maybe like in hospital death icu free days ventilator free days and all so again one uh, which shows a significant difference was renal replacement therapy free days which was different uh, in terms of uh, statistically significant between uh, both the group so then uh, again one more trial which we recently got is salted trial in 2018 balanced crystalloid versus saline in non critically ill patient what they done here is single center so more practical oriented trial so they done in uh, like non critically ill patient normal saline versus that of the balanced crystalloid outcome hospital free days in hospital death and hospital length of stay so secondary outcome was major adverse kidney events at the day 30 and composite death from any cause so new renal replacement therapy or persistent renal dysfunction these are the secondary outcome they looked in so called salte trial particularly which done in non critically ill patients so again so near about 13000 patients good number of patients so nearly equally uh, divided so median amount of crystalloid received in each group around 1 liter not crossing so called 2 liter so only only 33% of the patient received the fluid that is more than 2 liter which is having an impact on the acute kidney injury and some sort of secondary outcome again they were failed to show any mortality difference but there was a obvious significant difference in terms in terms of kidney injury score so again this is the components of major adverse kidney events author concluded among non critically ill adults treated with intravenous fluid in emergency department there was no difference in hospital free days between treatment with balanced crystalloids and treatment with saline again what are the limitations it's a single center study so physicians and patients were not blinded so they have some option they can use fluids as per their wish okay majority of the balanced crystalloids received was ringer lactate we don't know if you use more and more what like plasma light what is the impact on the outcome mm. data collection from emr did not allow more detailed information about the patient characteristics so fluid administered after admission and those used in medication carriers was also not considered in these trials okay so in conclusion for me strong physiological reason for not using normal saline so you have to be smart enough after this so called smart trial in choosing the fluid therapy particularly in critically ill patient current evidence suggests increased morbidity may not be mortality in relation to kidney injury so called normal saline may not be a normal so it may be an indeed an abnormal saline balanced crystalloid should be the fluid of choice especially in critically ill patients so we'll, yeah uh, it was a very uh, Uh, back up the evidence based uh, back up of his uh, conclusions but uh, i definitely uh, i am sure that kavita will have better uh, evidence and better interpretation of her uh, point of view uh, i will come kavita to defend her side